All righty. Well, they're not all going to be pretty, but that's okay. Um, because um, the Knicks um, did what they so often do, and that is find a way to uh, win a ball game that maybe other teams um, would 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 not be able to win. Um, and that's because I think we could say it now with one game left in this regular season, a regular season that um, has been um, uh Really, as many have said, a roller coaster. It's featured a lot of ups and downs. Um, but it is building momentum. It is gaining momentum at exactly the right time. And I say that even in light of the fact that they got off to a, tw- they were down 26 to nine in this game to the Brooklyn Nets, who, uh, aside from just sucking, um, are. Uh, we're missing a bunch of guys, and well, we could talk a little bit about why that happened. I think there were some reasons that are. I, I don't think I would term anything concerning. I think some of it was personnel. A lot of it was uh, the fact that Isaiah Hardenstein missed this game. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, they also had no deuce tonight, so the Knicks were a little bit shorthanded, aside from obviously missing Julius Randle, and they got down and. Um, it didn't, it didn't, not that it didn't matter. Of course it matters. You're down by 17 points. It doesn't matter who you're down 17 to. It's like, that's a, that's a, that's a legitimate thing to, to be worried about. And yeah, I don't think anybody watching this game was like, oh, I guess the Knicks are just going to lose tonight. And that's going to be a dispiriting loss to the Brooklyn Nets. Cause that's not, that's not what they do. It's not what this team's done on really all year, but especially as they've really coalesced and come together over the last bunch of months. Um, and I think, What's been nice about this recent winning streak is there's something that happens in each game where you're like, man, that's an important development. Like some things are givens, right? Like Jalen Brunson being um, one of the greatest Knicks of all time, a guy who is about to finish top five in MVP and all likelihood is going to make first team all NBA. Like Jalen Brunson being awesome eventually, even if he might get off to a slow start like he did in this game, that's a given. You know that's going to happen. You know he's going to go four for four from the free throw line down the stretch to seal the deal. Um, you know he's going to make tough buckets. You know he's going to make the right decision every time. Hello, 11 assists to zero turnovers. How many point guards in the league um, are pulling off that stat line? He just makes the right decision every time. Doesn't mean the shot's going to go in every time he takes it. Makes the right decision every time. Um, and you know that. You know Josh Hart is going to be a madman. And, uh, you know, He's had better stat lines, especially over this run where he's he's been a starter, you know, but only seven rebounds, which for him is like nothing. Only one assist. Josh Hart knew the assignment tonight and he came through because they needed him for his energy. They needed him for his toughness. They needed him. And most of all, in that third quarter, playing second fiddle to a guy we're going to talk about in a second, um, they needed his defense. And is finishing everything. Like again, on a game uh, in a game where a lot of guys, like a few guys, you're missing some guys. You're missing Hardenstein, huge part of your offense. You're missing Deuce with Pride. He's a big source of threes. Stephen Chancellor didn't really have D tonight. Two for eight. Um, you know, Brunson got off to a slow start. They needed Josh Hart's offense. You know, including by the way, two made threes and three attempts. But again, you know, you know more or less what you're going to get from Josh Hart, and you know more or less what you're going to get from OG Ananobi at this point. Because that dude, man, he's like, you know, I feel like it's the Jaws music should play with him. Because, you know, that shark, he's biding his time, he's biding his time, he's biding his time. First half, didn't score. You know, defense was his usual level, but like nothing out of the, nothing, nothing eye popping. And then third quarter, I mean, really third quarter, almost single handedly, again, with the assistance of Josh Hart and everybody played really hard on defense in that third quarter. But OJ and Obi just completely took the Nets game plan and 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 ripped it to shreds in front of their faces. Um, and that's what he could do. He could change a game by himself with what he does on the defensive end, and obviously what he could do in transition. But we know all that. So why was this win nice? What are the what is the thing we're gonna take away from this win? I think maybe, just maybe. Mitchell Robinson is back. 
And uh, Mitchell Robinson has been he has been back in the lineup now for several weeks. And yet at no point did, have I ever felt watching him since he has returned from an extended uh, injury absence like the Mitch that we fell in love with um, at the beginning of this. I mean, fell in love. we fell in love with him the day he first stepped on to the court in Vegas during summer league. I mean, the guy that when I say we fell in love with his potential as maybe a defensive or, or not potential. His actualization of his potential. There we go. I got there. Eventually I got there. Um, as a defensive player of the year candidate. That's where he was over the first 20 whatever games of the season. I think what we saw tonight on defense, I, don't jump and uh, don't get baited by a three-point shooter, Mitch. Other than that, though, as the game went on, first half left a little bit to be desired, but it was, it was better than Jericho Sims. Second half really turned it on. Um, also, on the uh, in terms of the offensive rebounding, grabbed six offensive rebounds. Uh, did Mitchell Robinson in this game, and then of course the lead story on the night ahead of Brunson, ahead of Hart, ahead of OG. Um, Precious gave him a couple good minutes there in the first half. He was solid, very solid. Uh, we will not mention Alec Burks' name, or at least I won't mention his name again until he gets brought up in the Super Chats. The lead story from this game, Mitchell Robinson getting fouled um, three times intentionally, but he went to the line eight total times in the fourth quarter, made five of those. And uh, kudos, I didn't even realize this. Uh, Fred Katz just tweeted it out. Mitchell Robinson played the entire fourth quarter. Um, and and this is his coach. Uh, Mitch makes plays no one else can. He ain't lying. And that's why for as frustrating as Mitch can be at times when you, you know, it's like, oh, my God, the guy can't even always catch a ball cleanly. Uh, it, it's worth it because the upside, the ceiling and the things, as Tib says, that he does that nobody else can. And then to come through with those made free throws, one or two, one or two, one or two. And then the big one made both of his attempts when the Nets fouled him with three seconds to go before the two-minute mark, which if you intentionally foul someone after the two-minute mark, it's uh, it's a, it goes down as an intentional foul. You get the two free throws and the ball back, so you can't do it. And I thought that was the play of the game. Yeah, Br- Brunson made a big basket after that, but the big br- the big bucket that Brunson made after that, how did that happen? Well, it only happened because after Jalen Brunson missed a shot initially, Mitchell Robinson got the rebound. So winning plays for Mitchell Robinson down the stretch of this game. Um, and they're going to need him. Uh, they're they're going to need him. They're going to need him because they, again, you, you, you can't, we love the Knicks starting five. I love the Knicks starting five. The Knicks starting five is, is, is really, really, really solid. You can't win in the playoffs with five guys. You can't even really win with six. You need seven. You need like six and a half, seven, you know, and we all have a lot of faith in Deuce. Missed tonight with an illness. We hope he, he gets better soon. Um, Bogey, you know, he, Bogey finished three of 11 tonight. And I thought the buckets he gave them were big buckets in the moment um, in 19 minutes. He was a minus one in 19 minutes. And I don't think that's a misnomer. And that's even with the Burks minutes, which were some of those were pretty rough. Um, but. Uh, we're going to need Mitch and we're going to need Mitch in particular because Mitchell Robinson, the way this team has been built where yeah, Jalen Brunson's the MVP candidate, but they just built everything around their centers. They built everything around their centers on both ends of the floor and they need that for 48 minutes. It's why they went out and signed Isaiah Hardenstein for what they did. And it's why they never wanted to trade away Mitch. That's why I think they're, I, I continue to hold out hope that there is a world the next series, season where both of those guys are back um, playing a big role because they, they need them both. Um, try to think if I have anything else to really say about this game. I mean, just great fight. The third quarter was like one of the best quarters the Knicks have played all season. I know it came against the Nets, but that was all inspiring stuff from the Knicks, especially on the defensive end in the third quarter. Um, and you know what? I'm going to do something that, you know, Andrew's going to yell at me for, but uh, what's right is right. Give credit to the Nets. This team has absolutely nothing to play for. Zero. As I said, missing a bunch of their guys. And like they came out and they gave a representative effort tonight. And they got hit in the ma- after they went up big and the 
the Knicks had a 28 point turnaround, turned a 17 point deficit to an 11 point advantage in the third quarter. Brooklyn did not wilt. Now, again, the Knicks backup minutes had a little bit to do with that, but they didn't wilt. They didn't go away. And Cam Thomas, look, Cam Thomas is not my cup of tea. I'm not sure I'd want him on my basketball team because if he's on your team, he's going to take a million shots. But there are nights where he takes a million shots and he makes a lot of them. And tonight was one of them. I mean, the dude was unconscious. Um, I think the luckiest part actually for the Knicks is probably that Lonnie Walker, who was even more unconscious in the first half, started missing and and really actually wasn't really involved as much in the in the second half. But uh, yeah, 41 from Cam. Good job by him, but better job by the Knicks. And uh, yeah, he would have would have thought this. Who would have thought this on June 30th, 2019, nearly five years ago, that we'd be sitting here with the Knicks on the verge of 50 wins with a record of 49 and 32. Well, little brother, 32 and 49. 